Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today is still March 16th, 2020. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. Um, I decided to make a um, Irish soda bread. <laughs> I started recording, but things went haywire, so I uh, am starting another video. So in my mixer here, I have the mixer there. I have uh, two sticks of, of mm, sweet butter, two whole eggs, large eggs, and a cup of sugar. Um, so to that, I'm sorry, I have very limited counter space. To that, we're going to add the dry ingredients, alternating with milk. So in this bowl here, I have four and a half cups of flour, and it calls for five teaspoons of baking powder. I had to go hunting for bake, more baking powder. I didn't realize I was out of my reduced sodium one, so yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to have ringing ears for a few days. That's all right. One. I guess I have to order more. Can't find this in the store. I have to order it online, believe it or not. Two. Get the sodium difference. 95 in this one. 35 in that one. Yeah, my ears are going to be ringing like crazy. All right, three, four, and five. Boy, hmm. 2011. Hope it still works. Okay, and a teaspoon of baking soda it calls oops sorry it calls for one and a half teaspoons of salt but I am not going to put that much in there because between the baking soda and the baking powder yeah okay so salt I always use I use the pink Himalayan salt I'm going to use a half a teaspoon instead of a teaspoon and a half. Now, it calls for, it says that it makes, excuse me, 24 servings, and there's 305 milligrams of sodium in it, each serving. So I'm, I'll do like three quarters. Um, I'm reducing the salt way down because that's a lot, and I'm the only person that's going to be eating it. So now that's the dry ingredients. So you're looking at four and a half cups of flour, five teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and a teaspoon of baking soda. I will be right back. I forgot something. Okay, I cannot figure out why you are blurry. I have no idea. Um, please don't fall. <laughs> yes, I talk to things around here. So, the recipe is in this book. It's a quite, quite a thick book. This is American style Irish soda bread. Now it says to sift the dry ingredients together. So if you don't have a sifter, you can use a um, strainer, a, a small strainer, you know, small hold strainer to sift them together because sometimes you have clumps. Now the difference between uh, if they wanted the flour sifted by itself, it would have said 
four and a half cups of sifted flour. So, and it, and it does make a big kind of a difference because you get an air in there. So, if it says, usually, um, if they want the flour sifted, it will say four and a half cups of sifted flour. Sometimes, if it says four and a half cups of flour and then in parentheses it says sifted, you measure the four and a half cups before you sift it. If it says four and a half cups of sifted flour, you're measuring the flour after you sift it. So that's a little bit of information that's kind of good to know. When I get this done, I'll bring you back. Okay, so. I don't know if I said it, but you're supposed to uh, beat your eggs, your sugar, and your butter until it is light and fluffy. Light and fluffy. So now you're going to fold in. You're going to fold in the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients alternately with the milk. And then you're going to stir in the seeds and the uh, raisins. So I don't always add the seeds. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, I just figured I'd bring you along for this because I love Irish soda bread. This is American style, so it's a little different. It's um, according to the book, it says sweeter and more tender than traditional Irish soda bread. And this is the one I believe that you're getting in um, your bakery section in your stores. If you're in America. So. Uh. Normally I use my spring form pan for this, but today I'm going to use a bunt pan because I think I might be able to portion it out better. Two cups of milk. Did I uh, mention the flour. I don't know. This is my second time doing this video because the first time everything became a disaster. I was hitting the pause button when I was recording when I didn't think I was recording and pausing when I didn't think it was paused. So that being said, <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of a day, I guess. I love Irish soda bread. Did I say that already? It is so yummy. I like it for breakfast with butter. Everything's got to have butter. Yeah, two sticks of butter and I need to add more butter to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is there any wonder why I'm fat? <laughs> and I think usually I make a half batch, but I'm making a whole batch today. So... I'm just going to put the rest in there. Probably should have done it in threes, but should have, could have, would have, right? So folding is a little different than stirring. Uh, did I say... There was something I mentioned in the other video. Oh, I didn't use as much salt. Um, I don't think that was it, though. I know that Irish soda bread is on sale at um, Price Chopper. Buy one, get one free. $4.99, which I guess is makes it $2.50, which isn't too bad. But, um, yeah, 
I'm going to add the rest of that milk. It's getting a little too hard here. Um, mm -hmm. Don't ask me. I have no idea. My train of thought goes away so easy. I don't know if it's an age thing or what, but or it could be the fibro too. I know I sound snotty, I think, right? Snooty. Whatever. But I'm not, really. <laughs> I just sound that way on video, I guess. I don't know. So. I'm going to make sure that flour is in there. Mixed in there. So I'm going to have to order more of my reduced sodium baking powder. I thought I had more. I can't find it if I do. I don't know what the heck I did with it. But it is what it is. All right. So now it calls for A cup and a half of raisins. This is a cup. That's where it's going with me because it is what it is. So here's the raisins. And I think that will be raisiny enough, quite honestly. And a tablespoon of caraway seeds. Which looks like I'm going to be out of them as well. That's okay. I'll live through it. I'll buy more. All right. It says to stir in the raisins and the caraway seeds, which I probably could put it back on my mixer, but I put the uh, paddle in the thing already. So, let me get my hands washed off and grease up my, I'm using a bunt pan. I've never used it before. Like I said, I usually use my springform pan, but um, I wanted to try it in the bunt pan because of servings. Hang on one minute, I'll be right back. Okay, so I don't know if I mentioned you're supposed to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. It says to spoon it in. It's going to be very raisiny. I hope this pan is going to be big enough. I'm supposed to put it in a 9 by 4 inch cake pan. Um, greased. And I guess this is why you want to spoon it in because it is quite thick. Mess my hands are clean. Anybody else make a mess when they bake? <laughs> totally make a mess. I think the raisins are going to be clumped in some spots. It's okay. It smells really good. I've made it before, so I know it and know it's good. I never made it to Christ Chopper for a uh, corned beef, but I have some canned up, so 
think I'll make like a casserole kind of thing because I have coleslaw, which is basically cabbage and carrots. And sorry, I have potatoes. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Makeshift St. Patrick's Day dinner. Because uh, I don't see me going to Price Chopper today or tomorrow, honestly. So, that's that. It's pretty much the only thing I use caraway seeds for, so. Well, there's cookies too, but. All right. I don't know how much this is going to puff up, but hopefully not a lot because it will go right over the edge. I got this this bun pan at a, I don't know if it was a rummage sale or Salvation Army thrift store. I think it's supposed to be two something because you see these little things on it, little nubby things. But it is glass bake, so it's oven safe. Hopefully that was greased enough. Because if not, we're going to have a hard time taking it out. <laughs> so I will put this in the oven. Uh, it says to bake for an hour and a half, less in a tube pan. So this is a tube pan. I'm going to check it in an hour and see what it looks like. And I will bring you back when it's done. Be back soon. I remembered what I forgot from the other video. When I um, add eggs to anything, I don't add the eggs directly to my... Um, bowl that I'm using. I crack them into a separate bowl and then I add them because you really don't want to lose all your ingredients and I'm thinking you know that that baking powder is kind of old I'm hoping it hoping it works but you don't want to lose the rest of your ingredients because of a bad egg or uh, baking powder that is no longer viable which uh, I had no choice, so hopefully it, it will work. Um, anyway, yeah, add your eggs separately, crack them into a little, I usually use a little plastic container or even a separate mixing uh, cup. But that's that was one thing that I forgot. I'll probably remember while I'm washing the rest of these dishes what the other thing was. I'll be back. Just so you all know, this is one of the, the ball canister jars, and pretty much as long as you tap it down, you can get a whole five pound bag of flour in there. I like them, it keeps everything fresh. This part comes off. So it's easier for washing. Yes, this is my old flour. So it was like a half a cup there. I'm just going to put it on top. And back it goes. Into its nice, neat little space. After I wipe it off. <laughs> you can see I uh, took my mixer off. Because there just is really no room, and I use my counter for um, fermenting my kefir as well. So once I get those jars on here, there really is no room. <laughs> right now, I'm uh, they're on my kitchen table. So I just wanted to let you give you that little tip there. 
they hold a whole five pound bag of flour. I'll be back when it's done. We have 20 minutes left for the hour and I'll see what it looks like after that and bring you back. Yes, I know I have candle wax on my lamp. Plus oh, it needs really to be, it needs a good cleaning. I'll be back. So a couple other things. Um, yes, I know this brand of flour is more expensive, but it is non-GMO. It tells you actually what type of wheat it is, where it's from, the protein content and all. Um, it's 100% employee owned. I really, I like this flower the best and I always use unbleached. I know I said that before, but um, yeah, I don't know how old that cookbook is. It's got to be a good, I'm going to say a good 10 years at least. I don't know if I moved here with it or if I bought it when I got here. I, I really don't know. And I've been here for 13 years. So it's either 10 or more than that. It's probably more than that. I would say maybe 15 years old, but I'm sure you could find a copy out there. And if not, maybe you can, um, they have a Baker's hotline. They could tell you where uh, you could find it, I'm sure. Yeah. I know this is like $3 and I can get Walmart flour for probably half the price. But yeah, no. I kind of want to know where it came from, the flour, where the wheat came from. I want to know that it's GMO free. So yeah. And the... You'd think I'm doing an ad for King Arthur flower, right? Well, hey, maybe they'll recognize me and they will, uh, I don't know, help me become an affiliate or something. I don't know. I'm just joking. I, um, uh, that's what I use, you know, mostly unless I can't find it. And then I'll look for something else that is non GMO and unbleached. I do not use bleach flower. It is not good for you. Okay, I'll be back again when that's done. Well, the baking soda is still viable. You want to know how I know? <laughs> the bread is overflowing onto my oven. I forgot to put a cookie sheet underneath it. So I just did that now. So yeah, the uh, baking soda is still good from 2011. Imagine that. I'll be back. Well, here she is. I let her go for... Uh, an hour and 20 minutes, a um, toothpick came out clean. <laughs> I picked it up and a cupcake sized piece fell out of the center. Now it says to cool on a rack, but it doesn't say to take it out. So, huh, I don't remember what I did last time, honestly. Might not even be able to get this out. Let's see what will happen if I turn her over. Uh, oh, look. <laughs> hmm. Think I'm gonna throw that back in on a cookie sheet. Sorry. So maybe it's a good thing I decided to uh, turn it over now, huh? I'm going to do this. Yeah, that's... Mm, yeah, yeah, that's got to go back in. I'll be back. So I wrote myself a note in here. Anybody else write notes in their, their uh, recipe books? Said I made a full batch and used the glass tube pan and it overflowed. So that way I know to either make a half a batch if I'm going to use the tube pan or to definitely use my spring form pan. <laughs> but um, I put it back in. I had turned the oven off before, you know, when I took it out. So I'm going to just let it sit in there for a little while. And, um, 
then I'll take it out. But these are the droppings. <laughs> this is the stuff that this has butter on it. Um, that oozed out. Made a little uh, muffin. <laughs> it tastes good. I like the caraway seeds in it sometimes. Mm. And a tablespoon is just like... Mm. I think it's like just perfect. I would use a little bit less maybe. Or not at all if you don't like caraway seeds. But yeah, it came out... Oops. The droppings came out pretty tasty. I'm going to just let it sit in there for a little while without any heat on it. I mean, it should be all right because it just looks like a little part of it didn't cook just like around the top. Well, which would be the bottom if it's upside down, right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll bring you back and let you see what it looks like. And if not, I'll just post the video as is. So if I post the video as is, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. So I put it back in. I did turn the oven back on for a little while. And then I, when I had it upside down, I kind of cut around this part because this is right right there was where it was, um, was kind of wet. So I put it back in. This was the center of that. Um, it's going to cool. I think it'll be fine. So learn from my mistake. If you're going to make a whole batch, either use a larger, um, uh, tube pan or use a spring form pan or make a half batch. If you want to use a smaller, I really like that. Like I said, this is the first time I made it and it looks cooked. Just a little pale, but it looks cooked. It feels cooked too. So that being said, there is my um, Irish soda bread. I went back in and I found another one. This is the last one, which is, and the best by date is 2018, but you saw I used the other one. Um, good thing too, because they're only selling these in 24 packs and they're like $40. But the thing is, you know, if you have an expiration date that's only two years away and you're not using near as much as you think you would use, it's a waste of money, you know. But this was obviously still good. So was the one from 2011. And da, 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 I have my um, herbs stored in an in, uh, old cleaned out cat litter bucket type thing. You know, the, um, it's actually from the bakery department, though. I found caraway seed. Yay! And they were on clearance, obviously, because there's no way these would be $1.25. So, I'm happy. All in all, I'm happy. Eh, it's not a total epic fail. It's a little bit of a fail, but not really. At least you guys get to see... <laughs> what happens when you don't use the right size pan. So I hope you enjoyed the recipe. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I'm kind of bat 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 and I know um, sometimes I don't do things all that, that well. I'm just feeling it. I want to make sure it's not wet <laughs> or really mushy. So Irish soda bread. It's that easy. As long as you use the right size pan or the right size recipe. And yes, that's my work if you're back on the counter. Um, that's it. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy if you make it. Talk to you later. Bye.